Hi, in this tutorial we're just going to go over metals. So I'm just going to basically explain different types of metals you can get. So you can get the alkaline metals, the like alkaline earth metals, the transition metals, and these are then split into different categories like the base metals or the Nobel metals, um, precious metals, and things like that. And on the website, I'll I'll put a few. Um, pictures up but I've got the I've got a few metal ores here so that's uh, a lead ore and that's a manganese ore and that's gold ore and this is an iron ore so this is how they look in the rocks in the ground um, but obviously they have completely different um, when they're isolated as metal they extract the pure element out of the rock they have completely different properties that we're all used to so I just put those um, to one side and I think it's very important actually to explain why metals have certain properties so I've got a little drawing I made earlier I'll just make it a little bit bigger so I can explain things So I looked at ionic bonding and covalent bonding before, but what's fundamental for metallic bonding is that we have these free electrons, and this is this is what makes metal metals really, because it's the ability of these elements to lose electrons freely, and for the electrons to move around from one atom to another quite freely is what like I say, it gives rise to metallic properties. So if I just, for example, um, take this as a metal, so say it's gold or, or silver or something like that, or iron, doesn't really matter. And if you try and move the metal, so you're hammering it, so the effect of hammering them, if you hit it with a hammer here, from this side here, and you can dint the metal, and all it does it will just move parts of the atoms to one side like that and it retains all its properties because the electrons are still moving so if you wanted to pass a, a current of electricity through here it would still work because these electrons are, are still moving around and they whiz around all over the place if you um, try to um, cut the metal with some I don't know, some shears or something like that you're effectively just drawing them apart and it will take energy to draw these parts away but then you're left with gaps and dints in the metal and stuff like that so it still conducts even though um, it's it's got a gap in it and things like that so that's basically what makes metal metals and like I said there are lots of different types of metals and usually the the definition for example base metals you'll probably hear about the base metals especially um, things like alchemists would try and convert base metals into noble metals so basically a base metal say something like iron is classed as a base metal so iron um, has a chemical symbol Fe and that's iron in the periodic table and I'll, I'll put the periodic table up so you can see where it comes so iron um, is a base metal and all that means is that it's it's quite susceptible to be oxidized uh, and really goes really and everyone knows iron rusts so that's uh, an example of that but if you take gold and that's a chemical symbol for gold 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 is actually classed as a precious metal and that just means it's it's got um, a, a high economic value so it's it's actually worth money you know people want it uh, because either it's got really good conductivity properties or um, it's it's nice and shiny I and mean, it looks good for jewelry or something like that so people trade gold quite well so it's got a high economic value so that's a precious metal so gold's a precious metal I'll just put these in circles um, iron's not quite a precious metal it's very abundant for a start and also it doesn't last very long because it oxidizes um, a lot of the base metals are classified by 
things like the reactivity with hydrochloric acid and these typically include uh, nickel, lead, zinc, things like that. The copper is in there as well but that, that doesn't react with hydrochloric acid but it's still considered to be a base metal because it will oxidize. So of the noble metals you, we have um, gold, we've got um, silver, uh, silver there, we've got tantalum, that's an A, that's a G actually. Um, I'll put these up on, on the on the video. Uh, rhodium, um, platinum, platinum's a, a very useful metal, very uh, high economic values, platinum. Uh, people would like to get as much platinum as they can get their hands on really. Um, so the noble metals really are resistant to corrosion. So you find things like gold, that's where people have gold rings, the, the gold lasts for quite a long time, doesn't oxidise in air and things like that. You can swim with it underwater and, and things like that. It, it won't come out all rusty. Um, so that's that's what defines the base metals and the noble metals. Um, so, but before I conclude the tutorial, the main thing that makes a metal a metal is this ability to lose electrons quite freely. That's one, so they're easily, so uh, something like a metal, I'll call it M, can go to M plus, charged plus an electron. I'll do that's my little symbol for the electron, E minus. So metals can easily lose electrons and become charged, which means they can react with. Um, other elements to form uh, metal halides for example and things like that. Um, another one is that these electrons are free to move around that's really important and that's really what defines them. That's defined, well, that's what defines them for me anyway because it means metals can conduct electricity and they can also move uh, heat very quickly so heat is just um, caused by vibrations or movement of molecules um, so these uh, can easily transfer that energy across them. The uh, element, uh, the elemental form for example uh, you heat this side you can see the heat the energy could easily work its way up to this side very quickly. They are usually large structures so there's lots of the same elements repeated and repeated and repeated so it's a bit like the covalent and bonded uh, macrostructures we did in the covalent bonding tutorial. Um, and that's basically it really, that's, um, that's metals in the elemental form. Uh, we'll do another tutorial on alloys and things like that and how metals are used in industry and, and in circuits and things like that. Uh, but basically an alloy is just a mixture of different elements so rather than one atom being this big, so say that was silver or platinum or palladium, uh, probably the best example is iron. So if that was iron and then we put other elements in there, for example carbon, then we'd start to produce things like steel. You might have heard of steel which is an alloy which has little bits of carbon and other elements uh, thrown in to give it different types of properties. So that's metals. A very basic introduction, uh, but the, the key message is that these free electrons uh, are what's giving rise to majority of the properties of metals.